Ken Singleton, so great to see you. We expected to see you on opening day in Baltimore, but under very different circumstances. You're home, I'm home. We all miss baseball, including the Yankee players, and some of them have chimed in on social media, and I'm gonna read you something that Aaron Judge posted this morning on his Twitter account. Says Aaron Judge, missing baseball and that opening day excitement. We will be back before we know it. Stay home and stay safe. Kenny, in light that this would have been opening day, I want to get your most awesome opening day memories. Do you have one? Well, yeah, I have a couple, and I think they're both very interesting. Uh, opening day, 1981, I was uh, with the Baltimore Orioles, of course, and we we're playing at home against the Kansas City Royals. Every player wants to get off to a great start, uh, you know, particularly an opening day and just go from there. My first swing of the season was a home run. Uh, and, hey. and, we, yeah, and we won that game. And uh, actually for the month of April, I hit 472. Now the last uh, day of April, if I had gotten two hits, I would hit 500 for the month. I ended up hitting a home run, but I went one for four. And the, the writers after the game said, you needed one more hit, you would have hit uh, 500 for the month. I said, how come you guys are telling me this now after the game? Yeah, I was going to ask, did you know that going in? No, I didn't. But I was so hot at the time, I could have got another hit if I wanted to. But I, <laughs> you know, it just didn't happen. I went one from four. Maybe I got too excited with, with the home run. And there was one other opening day. It was uh, uh, at home again in Baltimore, and we were playing the Chicago White Sox. Now, you know the weather isn't always great on opening day, but this particular year in Baltimore, it was like 74 degrees. It was a beautiful day, and fans showed up in short sleeves and, you know, in, in summer clothes. And by the seventh inning of the game, it was snowing. <laughs> a front came through. I could see it off in the distance, these dark clouds, and the temperature just dropped unbelievably, and snow flurries started coming out of the sky. People got caught with short sleeves. A lot of people went home. Fortunately, we won that game, too. So uh, just two different sort of things on opening day. But those are my uh, – those are good memories from years gone by. Definitely a win-win there. Good job, yeah. Kenny. <laughs> and, you know, looking at the current day situation, and really for every season, how important is it to get off to a fine start, win on opening day? Well, it, uh, most teams would like to do so. It, it, I wouldn't say it's paramount because teams have rallied and come on. You, you saw the Nationals last year. They were just terrible. I think they were 19-31, and 31, almost fired their manager, David Martinez, and they ended up winning the World Series. So I, I think that you'd like to get off to a good start. Uh, everybody feels good. Your home fans feel good when the team is out there, either first or second place, and not far out of first if you're in second. And uh, things are going well. You like to see your top pitchers rolling, your good hitters get going. Uh, but that doesn't always happen that way. So uh, it, it's a fortunately, it's a long, long season, and teams have plenty of time to rectify a, a, a semi-poor start. Your second career, just as fantastic as your first, of course, in the booth as a broadcaster. So it's only natural I'm going to ask, do you have a <laughs> favorite opening day as a broadcaster? I, I think I'll go all the way back to the beginning. My first year broadcasting a ball game on opening day, uh, I was working with Tommy Hutton. I was doing Expos games at the time, TSN. Uh, you're well aware of TSN. And Very we were well aware. <laughs> great field in Chicago. And my first ever interview was Harry Carey, uh, the legendary Hall of Fame broadcaster. It was a pregame interview. I was only supposed to be on for him for five minutes, but Harry kept going and going and going. And the producer said in my ear, just keep it going. We'll chop it up later. This is fantastic stuff. And Harry was just wonderful. He, he went on about opening day, how magnificent it was. Even though it's a little chilly here in Chicago, the ballpark's going to be packed. Baseball goes on from year to year to year. You know, players come and go, but baseball's here. He said, <laughs> one thing he did say, I was with the St. Louis Cardinals for 24 years. I thought they'd give me a gold watch. They gave me a pink slip instead. So. <laughs> <laughs> But Harry, of course, he went from St. Louis to Chicago where, you know, it just fortified his legend as a Hall of Fame broadcaster. And what's your runner-up opening day as a broadcaster? Ooh, let's see. Any, anyone at Yankee Stadium. Uh, there, it's, the atmosphere at Yankee Stadium is electric, as you know. Uh, having been there, usually yes is all over 
uh, opening day at Yankee Stadium as we would have been this year. It might be a little late, but, uh, you know, eventually, hopefully it shows up. I, I just think uh, this would be my 24th year with the Yankees. We've had a winning record every year, every year. And, uh, you know, 19 years, the yes has been around. Uh, it's, it's been phenomenal. I, I, I can't explain how good I feel about being able to go back to my roots. I grew up in New York, even though, you know, I played for the Mets briefly, but, you know, that was just a blip. And, but being mostly an Oriole and a division rival uh, with the Yankees, now getting a chance to return home where it all started for me. Um, I know we're going through tough times in New York right now, and uh, it means a lot to me. That's the that city. Um, if it wasn't for New York, let me put it this way. If it wasn't for New York and the New York area, I wouldn't be who I am or, or where I am right now today. It, that's how much it means to me. Will you always consider yourself a New Yorker? Yeah, I will. Even though I live in Maryland, my you know my wife and kids have all grown up in Maryland. I've lived in Maryland for about forty years, but uh, uh, I, I tell people when I go up to New York, you know, I don't get lost. I know where I'm going. You know, I just it's it's like deja vu, and it takes me back to earlier times in my life and uh, uh, back to my youth. And uh, you know, now I spend a lot more time in Florida because it's warmer. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get to play a lot more golf and that sort of thing. But uh, different stages of your life mean a lot to you, and uh, New York will always be very, very special. Well, the story of Yes Network can't be told without you. We're very grateful, and you've got the best stories. <laughs> I want to ask you one more time to share another. Some of the guys want it to be about Earl Weaver. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> there's stories I could tell about him. There's stories I can't tell about him. But uh, uh, Earl was a stickler. Uh, he was. Uh, the best manager I ever played for. I know he was rough around the edges back in the days when uh, there weren't as many cameras or microphones around, and uh, he could be very profane, and, but he would get <laughs> his across all the time, uh, whether it was uh, tearing down one of his own players in front of the whole team. He didn't hesitate. If you made mistakes, he was going to be all over your case. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm going to bring up one where uh, I, I dropped a fly ball in Chicago, an easy fly ball. It, I came back to the dugout. The White Sox didn't even score. So I felt really good about it because they would have scored some unearned runs because of my, you know, miscue in the outfield. So I come back to the dugout. You know, nothing happened. I felt pretty good. I got by. Here comes Earl walking down the dugout, and he looks at me. You know, I'm sitting down, and, you know, he wasn't very tall, so we were almost eye to eye. <laughs> and he looks at me, and he says, what's going on out there? What the heck are you doing? But he didn't say it that way. And I said, Earl, I have no excuse. I just dropped the ball. And it just, it just happened. And I said, they didn't even score. He said, that's not the point. You don't want to look bad in front of 30,000 people. I said, you think I want to look bad in front of 30,000 people? And then he, he started to get on me a little bit more. I said, Earl, look, I got to hit this inning. You know, why don't you just leave me the what alone? And he, he thought about it. And he said, oh, yeah. Hitting, he thought, I can see him thinking, hitting's important for this guy. You go ahead, go up and hit. And he never mentioned it again. And uh, that's just the type of guy he was. If he would yell at you, but if he thought you could help him win a game, uh, you, you were in the lineup. He held no grudges. He just wanted to make his point at that time. And, uh, you know, there are other managers that I played for. I think they did hold grudges against players. But Earl wasn't like that. He, he knew that winning was paramount. Um, he, the umpires hated him, and he hated them. It was just, it was just one of those things. I, you see, if you go to YouTube, you can see some uh, legendary arguments he's had with umpires. But this was like a once-a-week thing. You know, this he got thrown out of 91 games. That's an American League record. And he says it, it, it should have been even more because he got thrown out of games before they started. So it, they, didn't, they didn't count on his ledger of being thrown out of a game. So he, he was, he was uh, very unique. Like, managers aren't like that now. You, you, you just couldn't be. Um, they are more of the Aaron Boone type, you know, that, uh, you know, very good in front of the camera. Of course, Aaron was a broadcaster and, uh, they know how to relate to people. Earl didn't always, he related to people, but not in the way they wanted. <laughs> so. Thank you so much, Kenny. I look forward to our next visit. I'm so happy to have seen you. So proud to call you teammate. Take yeah. care of yourself and your family until next time. And until we have baseball. See you soon. Yeah. Be safe, Nancy. Be safe.